Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on January 17th, 2025. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Always starting out here looking at the last 48 hours of our sun. Pretty bright, active sunspot regions, and as well that fast-forming sunspot I showed yesterday produced a pretty strong M-class solar flare today. Visible here, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, mixed with daily events worldwide. Having a look at the last two days of imagery, this is incoming. Pretty large plasma prominence looping around the surface there. And then looking at outgoing. There's that fast-forming sunspot region. And as well, a big plasma shot there that produced a, a coronal mass ejection. Large coronal hole that is Earth-facing right now, 171 angstroms. If you're enjoying all of this information and imagery shared, please don't forget to give a thumbs up. And thank you again for watching. Looking at another light here, just amazing images. And I'm so, a I'm so grateful that I'm able to visualize our sun like this safely and as well share it with all of you, my friends and family around the world. M-class solar flare, multiple sunspot regions that are earth facing. A couple of them are pretty big players. And the surprise sunspot region that came out of nowhere, look at that. Amazing stuff. 24-hour period, this thing turned into a beast of a sunspot and produced an M-class so solar flare. Sunspot region 3964, pretty epic. And look at these sunspot regions. Boy, oh boy, they look dangerous and all Earth-facing. Currently, we're under R2, moderate Radio blackout impacts expected. Solar winds are coming in at 539 kilometers per second. And that is from the most recent coronal hole wind stream. Solar X-ray flux showing a couple more M-class solar flares. So that's about six M-class solar flares overnight and throughout the day. Strong M7 being the strongest. Geomagnetic activity hovering around a KP4 region. And that is brought to you by our coronal hole wind stream, which increased our solar winds up to 100 kilometers per second overnight as they are topped out at 530 kilometers per second right now. Awesome depiction of our shield being put to the test with these solar winds. Yesterday it started out climbing upwards to 480 overnight and then 580 throughout the day today. Welcome to Solar Cycle 25, which is a solar maximum lasting upwards of 11 years. Current Space Weather Prediction Center here is showing that big coronal hole affecting us and how long it will be. Looks to be about three days, right up until the 21st. And that's if we don't have any more coronal mass ejections headed our way. ISWA Space Prediction Spiral showing last night's CME taking off towards JUICE. And then a new CME, small one, kind of Earth-directed. You look on the right-hand side depiction, yellow circle is Earth. Minor effect by that instantly. And that is from the M-class solar flare, I'm sure. Tonight's Aurora view line versus tomorrow's. And then a look at Alaska 3, showing here since the 12th when we saw Comet Atlas going to the view. Showing here the most recent coronal mass ejection taking off from the bottom right-hand corner there. That was from that plasma filament shot that I focused in on in the Daily Sun short. If you're enjoying those videos, please don't forget to give a thumbs up in those videos. Share them. It's a good place to share the channel. Let's grow to 100k together. Forever. Do crew for life. Now let's have a look at earthquakes past 24 hours we did see a little bit of activity in south american plate yesterday i was a little bit worried it was way too quiet through the region 
4.9 earthquake there reported last night. Mid-Atlantic Ridge late last night. Still pretty quiet for the region. African Plate still rocking. 4.9 earthquake there. South Indian Plate and as well Indian Antarctic Plate. 5.0 magnitude earthquake there. No real deep earthquakes in Fiji. 138 kilometer depth Vanuatu. That's the deepest the past 24 hours. Alaska seeing increased seismicity. 4.1 there. Valdez, Alaska. And as well a 4.0 Chignik. Looking across the United States. Notable 3.2 there. Stanley, Idaho. As well 3.2. Mexico, California border. Seismicity continuing at Hawaii. Kilauea volcano looking at infrared imagery here of the caldera as it is still spewing tons of lava onto the cooled surface of the summit. There is a large fountain of lava in the right-hand corner there. Spewing lava probably about 30 to 40 meters tall. This caldera is probably about four football fields across. Carrying on here, USGS reporting 241 earthquakes past 24 hours. Notable seismicity moving up into Stanley, Idaho. North and northwest of Yellowstone. A lot of people concerned about Yellowstone on my channel, and I'm not. If anything, that big blob has moved into Idaho. No real swarms to talk about. USGS still reporting above normal earthquakes still way too quiet south american plate constitution chile now let's have a glance at the last seven days for shakers and movers largest being the 6.8 earthquake that hit japan just about four or five days ago but notable earthquakes mariana's trench this week and as well, all the notable activity continuing in Africa. Much love, everybody. Stay aware and prepared. You live in an earthquake prone zone? Just have a plan and be ready. Now let's have a look at our air quality forecast brought to you by active and erupting volcanoes. Big plume coming out of the central Pacific from Kilauea volcano. As well, multiple plumes coming out of Mexico and Kamchatka, parts of eastern Russia. Give you a quick focus in on the air quality here east of the big the big island of Hawaii. Kilauea volcano, very active right now and has been for a few nights. Overlooking Australia, Southeast Asia, and Africa. Notable plume coming out of New Caledonia at the Aoba volcano. And things are diminishing through Central Africa. Yesterday there was an increase, but has since diminished. We're focusing in here now on the temperatures. Over the next little while, we're going to be showing temperatures right up until the end of the month. Deep polar vortex moving in. It's going to be mixed with some pretty warm temps from the Pacific. But long-range forecast, Siberian polar vortex is going to be very intense. Probably dropping temperatures to minus 40 degrees Celsius with those big purples moving into Canada. And that's without the wind chill. There's even the light pinks up there in parts of northern Alaska. You guys are going to be feeling it too. The deep freeze is on its way. Forecast models here showing it very prevalent. And as well, big Pacific warm blobs still coming out of the equatorial region of the Pacific Ocean. Overlooking Europe and, of course, Russia. As you're going to see, those light pinks in the purples, that's minus 50 to minus 60 degrees Celsius. See the Tibetan region? Extreme cold temperatures there. And then just west there, huge high-pressure ridge, lots of warm temps still fueling into Europe. So it's going to be a battle, but the deep freeze is coming for you guys as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. Stay prepared. Stay alive. Get your